My presentation is about uh, a new uh, research methodology that Inter Institute for Mediterranean Studies has been uh, working on for a long time. This is an effort to re-understand the Mediterranean history for a macro perspective. Okay, uh, let me start uh, to read my introduction. Today, I would like to make a proposal for the Mediterranean studies. Its principal reason is that the Mediterranean, I think, it, uh, was a multiracial global society. This is not to deny the previous research uh, traditions, but rather to complement them. Multiracial globalization means that we have already been social animals since ancient times and have been living in relationships with others. Then how should we recognize the historical sociality the key of historical sociality corresponds to the humanities standard for historical interpretation. And we need to move away from Eurocentrism and Orientalism. The purpose of this sociality is to understand the pattern of their organic relations based on an individual approach to the members of a Mediterranean society. In this regard, the Mediterranean history is a good example of a multiracial globalization. In today's presentation, I propose the necessity of reinterpreting the Mediterranean history, focusing on the civilization exchanges. This may be a new research frontier for Mediterranean studies in our century. Even in history research, interpretation based on a selfish point of view, that is a perspective in which the part represents the whole, including them, is dominant. This typical case is Eurocentrism or uh, Occidentalism. Edward Said's Orientalism is the reflection on the, the Orient in the mirror of 19th century European intellectual tradition. Naturally, this Orient does not exist and is not the reality as it is. Why does this Orient exist based on distortion and incuriosity? Perhaps it originated from a limited perception of the Italian intellectuality on, of Renaissance in the 14th and 16th centuries. Or it would be the academic result of 19th century European civilization's understanding of itself as a self-made civilization by his own merit. In this context, the transposition of the Eastern and Western world, which we often refer to, is nothing more than a fictional composition that is uh, uh, rationally considered. So how can we overcome the iniquity of the kind of history interpretation, which is Occidentalism. The problem is that neither the Western nor the Eastern has an alternative to that. I think that our history research should start with a reflection on propos proposition, which is many criticism, no any alternative. Of course, that's not to say there weren't any attempt. However, most of those regard the Mediterranean as a composition of its many mosaic puzzles. This is also the result of not breaking away from the research tradition and nationalism of regional studies. 
On the other hand, Abu Lafia judged the Mediterranean to be a sea of diversity. Nevertheless, he looked at the Mediterranean from a Jewish point of view. For him, the Mediterranean was just the sea of European uh, diversity. Peregrine Hoden and Nicholas Purcell proposed a new Mediterranean by using the word corrupting to mean hybrid and interaction in their corrupting sea. However, it seems that they were also obsessed were, uh, with the 16th century medieval cosmic creationism that Margot emerged from cheese. Marshall Hodgson's, Marshall Hodgson's work is very interesting. He not only boldly criticized the Mediterranean reflected only in the mirror of Western civilization, but also interpreted the Mediterranean as a sea of all where numerous local civilizations, societies, and the cultures coexisted. However, he was paid to present a specific research methodology for this purpose. In this presentation, I would like to point out two facts. The first is to reconsider our perspective, and the second is try to find possibly a new research methodology for these issues. A shift in perspective means an effort to find new alternatives. History leads us to different destinations depending on which road we choose. We are not free for, uh, from this fact. Particular attention should be paid to understanding the relationship between the historical factors constituting history and their variable state of equilibrium. Then why the concept of equity and balance are important in our study. This is directly related to historical interpretation. In my view, the need for a shift in uh, perspective stem from the fact that the previous research tradition had have been incompletely studied. We decipher and interpret history because our future depend, depends heavily on our experience. Judging the past unilaterally, <clears throat> narrowly, and only with the logic of superiority and inferiority does not help us understand history. Eurocentrism and Orientalism are in parallel with each other, and it is virtually impossible to find their contact point with them, but they are like the two sides of a coin. In fact, it is not due to mention the term globalization in our age because this term is not exclusive to our generation. So what was the process of historical globalization like? This process was neither one-sided nor monolithic. There were various type of uh, uh, exchanges between opposing factors. And in this process, the opposite flow of competition and cooperation continued to unfold. Not only that, those situations were organic in their relationship with each other. The globalization process may seem like a one-way flow on the surface, but internally opposite factors acted together. The main and the secondary flow are mixed Historically, glo globalization has been a process of civilization exchanges. This show directivity for balance and expandability for historical space. 
in the historical philosophy, those concepts of a balanced space and expandability result in the context of a relationship and balance through exchanges. The orientation of a time toward a state of equilibrium does not explain the nature of time itself. Rather, in human history, as times go by, the internal factors complement each other, ultimately leading to a state of equilibrium. This idea presupposed the hypothesis that time flowed cyclically. On the other hand, if time moved linearly between historical factors, competition, and logic of superiority and inferiority are overemphasized. Then why does the historically such methodology of civilization exchanges need the time recognition of a cycle theory? This is because in the perception of the time of circularity, there are device and differential differences between the subjective factors of civilization exchanges and the principle of their complementary operation is clearly revealed. The ex extensibility of a historical space ultimately and strongly suggests historical globalization. This means that the human space is initially divided and formed independently, depending on the, on the influence of the natural environment. But after that, their space is gradually converted into a space for all, globalized. Uh, this figure, second figure, uh, no, uh, sorry, uh, this figure uh, means that the historical space continued to expand through the cycle of a principle of a birth, growth, harvest, and rest. In the ancient Mediterranean history, Greek city-states and Mesopotamian civilization realized the overlap of a historical space through exchanges of trade and war based on differences in civilization identities. And they contribute to the establishment of new generation culture, that is a hybrid civilization called Hellenism through the intervention of Alexander. A similar logic can be found in the Iberian history, which was dominated by Islam for a long time. Under Muslim rule, the Iberian Peninsula was incorporated into a vast uh, Islamic civilization spanning North Africa, the Middle East, and the Indian Ocean. This was the expansion of Islamic civilization, but at the same time, a new generation of local culture was originated by the repetitive coexistence of a Christian, Germanic culture, and Islamic culture. There is nothing we can do alone. We are extremely social animals. The history has no meaning by itself and only has its own meaning when interpreted. Just as we are social animals, it is inevitable to consider sociality in history as well. It is for this reason that history is understood as the relationship between various factors and the process of its change. It is true that history began, begins with relationships. However, our historical tradition has been obsessed with individual studies of each component after classifying or isolating the factors of the relationship. 
area study was established in, the, in this uh, context. Understanding history as a concept of a line connected with the relationship and evaluating it as a sum of articulated points are completely different. And the results are also very different. The ancient Greek civilization was evaluated as a foundation of European civilization by European scholars in the 19th century, as you know. In the study of a Hellenistic civilization, ancient Greek was that would be a powerful and high level civilization that could be compared to the genetic domination. And it was evaluated that he, it had a strong influence on the Persian and Egyptian civilization, but it is not true. A changing comes from difference and their interactions. Therefore, it is very important to analyze the differences that exist inside and outside the relationship structure and their interaction. We openly considered differences as only the main cause of a conflict. People tend to gather, to gather with like-minded people and make human intimacy. However, this only facilitates the beginning of a human relationship and never significantly affect the chemical changes between two people. Most people only see differences as causes of conflict. From the viewpoint of civilization exchanges, the differences are accompanied by cases of discrimination that are easily revealed, as well as uh, cases with opposite meaning. Those are differences that should be considered in terms of uh, uh, diversity. Those are differences that should be considered in terms of diversity. Diversity is another part of the meaning of a difference the complex meaning of a discrimination and diversity implied by difference is a very important criterion in the historical interpretation of civilization exchanges. Ancient Greek, ancient Mediterranean Greek uh, city state were representative uh, examples of a non self sufficient economy area. In society, they form the progressive and active thinking along with individualism, discussion, culture, and democracy. And Greek cities developed an active disposition toward the outside world. On the other hand, big civilization developed collectivism and autocracy in production and labor as a self-sufficient economy area. In addition, it's maintained an inward oriented tendency toward the outside world. The different identities of two civilizations satisfy their need for each other while establishing a concrete relationship between them. Their diverse and discriminatory Differences act complementary to each other. Greek civilization developed its own identity while receiving considerable influence from the big civilization area. In history, complementarity is neither separated nor exceptional. It exists in all time and in all circumstances. Interpreting history based on the principle of a complementarity is as natural as the nature of water in the um, yang, and five elements. In other words, neo Confucianism. In fact, water maintained its softness and flexibility that is not excessive 
even in mutual relationship with fire, wood, gold, and earth. The history of any region of, or country, without exception, occurred and renewed its own unique identity through relationship with its surrounding. There has always been intervention of mediating factors in history, repeating the rise and force and different historical dimensions. It is like a new situation is created at each stage in our life or a new person appeared to stimulate change. The mediating factor is essential for the expansion of a historical space, globalization, and the passage of time to achieve a new balance. In addition, the mediation factor appeared as a new factor in the existing historical situation and exert various influence and paid a role as a counterpartner for the other in subsequent new historical situation. In the process of unification of ancient Mediterranean by the Roman Empire, there were exchanges between great and small civilization, the Persian world and Hellenism. Alexander of Macedonia completed the flow of exchanges between big and small dimension civilization and was a factor in historical mediation for new generation of a hybrid generation, uh, civilization, sorry. Also, the Islamic conquest of the Iberian Peninsula also ended the conflict between German and Iberian peoples. And the Iberia was able to grow into an advanced civilization in the Mediterranean, Mediterranean during 800 years of Muslim rule. Thanks. Thanks for your uh, thanks for your listening to the boring stuff. Thank you.